Well, now to the protests. Uh, back home, protests of a very different kind. These are peaceful protests in Madison, Wisconsin, by union members. That uh, demonstration is moving into its 13th day. Yesterday's uh, <clears throat> turnout of 70,000 was the largest yet, and yesterday union workers across the country turned out to support them. These demonstrations over the Wisconsin governor's plan to reduce spending by ending the collective bargaining rights of teachers and many other public service employees. Well, Governor Christie, uh, you took on the, uh, the public service uh, unions in New Jersey, but you didn't talk about ending collective bargaining rights. Do you think Governor Walker out there in Wisconsin has gone too far? Bob, let me tell you what, what went on in New Jersey. My predecessor, Governor Corzine, stood on the front steps of the Capitol at a public sector union rally and said, I'll fight to get you a good contract. And I thought to myself watching that, well, who's he fighting with? <laughs> Once he says that, the fight's over. What I believe in is true adversarial collective bargaining. And so every state is different. I'm not going to micromanage Wisconsin from Trenton, New Jersey. I know Scott Walker. I like him and I trust him. And I think he believes he's doing what's in the best interest of Wisconsin the same way I'm going to do what I think needs to be done for New Jersey, which is to reform the pension system, to roll back expensive health benefits for public sector workers, to put them more in line with the rest of the population in New Jersey, to put us on a long-term path to fiscal stability. Well, but what about this idea? Do they have a right to collective bargaining? Oh, listen, all these rights are legislatively created. Uh, they didn't come down from tablets at the top of a mountain. And so political things change and go back and forth. And every state's going to make their own determination on that. Wisconsin's in the middle of making that determination. As you know, Bob, there are plenty of states in America where that right doesn't exist. And so each state has to make their own determination on that. Well, is that good or bad for New Jersey? Do you think you ought to have the right in New Jersey to collective bargain? What I've said in New Jersey is as long as it's fair and reasonable collective bargaining. You know, we can't have what we've had before. You know, Bob, public sector workers, state workers in New Jersey, this past year, we're working under a contract from my predecessor, John Corzine, got 7% salary increases in a 0% inflation world. I don't think the people who are paying the bills think that's the result of fair adversarial collective bargaining. They want someone in the room representing the taxpayers, and that's what I'll be this June when that contract expires. Do you see a danger here that this is turning into some kind of, maybe it's not a danger, maybe it's something you would encourage, turning into some kind of a national political war where you have Democrats and the unions on one side and Republicans on the other? I, I don't think it is. I think, again, there are so many states that don't have collective bargaining, and there are a lot of states that are not having this conflict right now. And so I think this is really a state-by-state -state issue. There's a lot of interest in this right now because of the emotion that's going on in Wisconsin, the strong stand by Governor Walker and the strong stand by the people on the other side. It'll be resolved politically uh, in the state legislature in Wisconsin. So I don't see it that way. Obviously, it has national interest in the story, Bob, but we've been taking on the unions in New Jersey for the last year, and that's gotten a lot of attention, too. So everybody's doing it their own way. Let me ask you this. Uh you really came on hard against the teachers union. I think everybody in this country on all sides of all this thinks we need education reform, that we've got to do something to make our educational system better. Do you worry that the stance you have taken has somehow demonized teachers and, and will raise questions in young people's minds as to whether they want to go into the profession? No, I don't. In fact, I think quite the opposite. Listen, I think that the teachers in New Jersey, and there's thousands and thousands of great ones, deserve a union as good as they are, and they don't have it. And I disagree with the premise of your question, which is that everybody agrees there should be education reform. It's everybody but the teachers union who believes that everything's fine. If you listen to them in New Jersey, they'll tell you everything's fine. I mean, it's great. It's great except for the 104,000 kids in New Jersey that are struck in, stuck in 200 chronically failing schools. You know, just because their zip code is in a poor urban center doesn't mean that we shouldn't be fighting to change the system that's failing them. So, no, I, what I'm trying to do is set up a merit-based system for teachers so that great ones get rewarded and paid more and that the really great ones want to stay in the profession, not only because they love it, but because they're also rewarded financially for it. The union, Bob, they protect the worst of the worst. That's what they're there for. They make it impossible to fire bad teachers, and it's ruining our education system. What do you think of President Obama's plans to reform education uh, at the federal level uh, by his, uh, you know, let's uh, reward good teachers, uh, his uh, 
you know, uh, the, the things that uh, Secretary Duncan has outlined. Are, are you generally think he's on the right track? I do, and, and I've said that publicly. I think the president has shown some real courage, especially for a Democrat who's been dependent upon the teachers' union nationally for political support to come out for merit pay and race to the top and some of the things that he's done to push reform. I think the president's been on the right track. I'm a little concerned at comments I heard yesterday from Secretary Duncan that seemed to be, you know, blowing the horn of retreat on that a little bit, and I, I hope that that's not an election year ploy for them to cozy back back up to the NEA and the ATF as the president prepares for re-election. But in general, I think the president's been very strong on this, and that's why you see Republicans agreeing with him on it. You have a uh, reputation as a straight talker, I think. Uh, do you believe that the budgetary problems across this country can be resolved without raising taxes? Well, let's take New Jersey, for instance, Bob. We raised taxes and fees 115 times in the last eight years, and we still have one of the worst budget problems in America. And so I think unless you deal with the underlying structural expense problems, and we've been dealing with them in New Jersey, there's no amount of taxation that's ever going to keep up with the amount of spending increase that we have. And so my view is we've already done things on the tax side in New Jersey. We have one of the highest top marginal income tax rates, one of the highest sales tax rates, one of the highest corporate business tax rates. What we need to get to now is cutting back the size and scope of government and have those two things meet. For instance, this year in my budget, while we still reduce spending, I added $250 million to K-12 education. We're going to do things that make sense, but we're not going to continue the spending spree, and we're certainly not just going to go back to raising more and more taxes. The people in New Jersey have had enough of that. 115 times in eight years, I think they've given at the office, Bob. You know, uh, there are some groups, anti-tax groups, that ask people, especially people who are running for uh, the Republican nomination for president, to take a pledge not to raise taxes. I know you're not running. I know what you said about running. But is, would you do that? Would you ever take a pledge not to raise taxes? Well, listen, if I were running, I guess I'd have to make that decision. But at the end of the day, I think what matters much more is what you do and not anything that you sign or, or that you say. You have to prove and do it. And I think the reason why people in New Jersey are responding to what we're doing is I'm actually doing in the job, Bob, what I said I would do. I said if there were income tax increases, I would veto them. I did, and my veto was sustained. I said I would cut spending in the size of government. We've now cut spending two years in a row, not projected spending, really spending and we're taking on the things that they're not taking on right now at the federal level pension benefits and health care and we're doing those two things to cut back the cost of that one of the things that you have uh, spoken out on is something that a lot of people in politics have not here's what you said at the american enterprise institute this week in washington you're gonna have to raise the retirement age for social security oh i just said it and i'm still standing here <laughs> I did not vaporize into the carpeting, and I said it. All right, you said it. I did. Should, should other people be saying that? Of course. I mean, listen, you know and I know that the overwhelming majority of the problem on the federal level comes down to three programs, Social Security, Medicare, and Medicaid. And unless we go about tackling those three issues, all the rest of the things the president's talking about and others on Capitol Hill are talking about are minor league issues. Not saying they're not important, not saying that they're not, you know, interesting, and, and, and I might like some of them. But if you don't deal with those three, those three are going to eat up everything else. And so we got to start dealing with it. And I think the people of the United States are ready for a frank adult conversation about it. I've seen that in New Jersey. I've done a lot of things that people say I don't like, but I'm glad you're taking it on because you have to because we know we're in trouble. And so my view on it is, and the reason I came down and gave that speech was to say to people, stop being afraid and stop telling, selling the people of America short. They're smart. They know we have to do this.